So let's go and get started. And I'm just going to kind of work through my process, the way that I help my students or explain to my students how to graph cosecant. So the first example that we are going to work on is going to be the cosecant of 2x. All right. So my process for graphing cosecant is to not graph cosecant at all. It is to graph the reciprocal function, which is going to be sine. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm just going to think about this as the sine of 2x, okay? And that is the reason being is the sine of x and cosecant x are what we call reciprocal functions of one another. And you're going to see how their graphs are going to be related. So I don't like to focus on cosecant. I just like to focus on the reciprocal for sine. And then I want to just go and go through the process that I have up to this point as far as graphing sine. Now, if you still need help graphing sine, I'll have some more examples down in the description down below to you know help you kind of go through those uh, steps but I'll kind of work through everything here just a little bit quicker. So the first thing when we're graphing sine, I always want to make sure I identify the amplitude. Remember, that's going to be the absolute value of a, which is the coefficient of your function, which in this example is absolute value of one. And then I'm going to look at the period. Actually, let's put period over here. And the period is going to be my two pi divided by b, where b is the coefficient of x. So in this case, it's going to be two pi divided by two, which is simply just going to give me pi. Then what I need to identify is going to be my X scale. And the X scale is simply going to be my period um, divided by four. So I'm going to take pi and go ahead and divide it by four. All right. And then I just want to see if there's any other transformations, any vertical um, or horizontal shifts or phase shifts. And in this case, there are none, but we'll get to those examples as we go. So what I'm going to do is just kind of create my X and my Y axis because I'm using X and Y's for these functions. And I know that a full period of sine, right? I know what that kind of graph looks like, but so I'm gonna have, I'll put pi here. That's how long it's gonna complete a cycle. And then halfway will be pi halves. This will be pi fourths. And the reason why I'm doing that, sorry about that, is the X scale is pi divided by four, right? So I know I'm gonna have uh, five important points on my scale for sine. So I'm gonna have pi fourths, pi halves, and then this will be three pi over four. And you can see the distance between each of these tick marks starting at zero would be pi hat, pi force, pi force, pi force, pi force, right? You keep on adding pi force there. Um, the amplitude's one, so that means I'm going to go up one and I'm going to be able to go down to one. Okay, so that's one and that will be a negative one. Now, when I'm going ahead and graphing sine, I don't know, I actually kind of left myself not enough room here. So I'm going to bring this down. Let's go to there. Okay, now a lot of times in the classroom, Obviously, if I'm teaching on the board, I'll have like dry erase marker so I can just go and erase it. Um, sometimes I'll tell my students to maybe even use like a dashed line so you can kind of represent it. Um, but or you could use a pencil and just erase it. OK, because again, we're graphing cosecant. We're not graphing sine. But I want to know what the sine function looks like. So hopefully at this point, you have at least an understanding of the parent function for sine. You know, it's going to have an intercept of zero, zero. Again, we don't have any transformations, right? We just have. Um, we just have a change in the period. That's really the only thing that's happening in this graph. So I'm going to start at zero, zero, and then I'm going to go up to one, down to zero, zero, down to negative one, and then go to zero. Okay. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and draw this red, and then I will delete it using my software. Now, the important thing here for cosecant is wherever a, I have an intercept that is going to create a vertical asymptote. Okay. So you're going to go to these intercepts and you're going to create these vertical asymptotes. Now, the reason why this is the case, let me just kind of show you on general for cosecant. If I just looked at the cosecant of X, um, if we look at a unit circle with no transformations, okay, what I want you to be able to see is one comma zero is right here, right? That's at the angle zero. Well, if you look at sine of X, right? What is the sine of that angle here? The sine represents the Y coordinate, which in this case is zero. That's why we have that in the initial parent graph. So uh, the parent graph looks like that, okay? So because again, the first angle is zero and the sine of zero is zero. However, when you look at cosecant, remember cosecant represents one over Y, right? Where sine represents Y as the coordinate point on the end circle, cosecant represents one over y. So when we plug in the first angle of zero, which is, you know, right here, we're going to get one over zero, which is undefined. That's why we have these asymptotes going on here. 
Now, the cool thing about this is these are the reciprocals. They're still going to share the point. Like this is zero comma one, zero one and one over one is still going to be the same. So they're going to share these uh, max and mins. And then if you remember the graph, when you have asymptotes, your graph, ha your graph has to approach them. Okay. And so what it's simply going to do is just going to look like that. And then you simply just take from your max and your mins and you approach it. Now, if your teacher is asking you for two initial periods, all you simply need to do is continue your X scale. That's why it's so important to understand where the X scale is. Understand where your starting point is, which in this case, there's no transformations, but we'll get to that. But then you can just continue your X scale, adding pi over four, and then you just continue this pattern. Now, again, we don't want to confuse our teacher and think that we're graphing sine. So I'm simply just going to erase that and say, hey, teacher, there we go. That's one period. And then you can obviously um, add an extra period as your teacher, uh, as the directions ask for.